What's up YouTube? I'm just another guy and welcome back to Gibraltar United. So we're in the 2nd of January. Uh, I did want to do a game today, a live com, but uh, for some reason a few games got rearranged. Which means my next game isn't until the 23rd of January. I thought that's a bit too far away. We'll do an update now because we've just sort of entered the second transfer market. And that way next time I see you we'll have transfers to go through hopefully if we can sign a few people. And you know we'll have that end of season as well to go through. But we'll, we'll jump into this and we'll go somewhere we don't typically go first. We'll go into the transfers. I told you last time after a disappointing defeat to TNS, I wanted to take my time with the transfers. I wanted to make sure I was picking the right people out, people that would grow with the team over the next two years minimum. And that's what I did and I think I signed the right amount of players. Plus we actually spent money. For the first time in our career, we've spent a little bit of money on a player. And I think it was the right player I spent money on. I won't be doing that too often, spending money, but if I have to, if I feel currently there's no one better out there, I won't be afraid to spend a little bit of money. We do have a lot in the bank, um, we can afford it, with the deal I, pre I currently did as well, there are clauses involved in it, so, you know, it's not all up front, I'm not crippling the club, I don't think, anyway. But let's go into the transfers and talk about what we've done. So, with the outs, we released the free players, we released a lot of backup players, including Gareth Clark, who had that incredibly good year with us. Um... Back in 20, 2019, 2020, when Gregory was, Gregory was out for a long time, he's now joined St. Joseph's Gibraltar in the second division. But apart from that, nothing else to really talk about. Um, so we'll go to the inns, and that is, of course, the most interesting side. So let's start with Antonio Jesus Sanchez. £49,000, the most expensive player ever brought by our team A, and I imagine the whole league B ever in this league's history. £49,000. Now, I believe, if I can remember back, it was 9,000 up front, 40,000 over 48 months. So that means we're paying less than 1,000 pounds a month. And I think that is perfectly acceptable. I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a long way in the future, yes. It's four years. For four years, we're paying about 1,000 pounds a month, which could be seen as quite a bit. But to me, I'd rather do that than pay it all up front because I don't know in a year's or two's time if I'm going to have that, you know, if I'm going to, if that will come back and, you know, haunt me in a way. I'd rather pay it a thousand pounds every month or less than a thousand pounds every month. So the reason I, I'm happy with this, I'm happy with that transfer fee. And the reason is because he's an absolute beast of a player. Antonio Jesus Sanchez, he came in from Segunda, I believe it is, a, B, a B1 team or former Segunda 1 B team. But if we look at some of his history, he started at Granada. Uh, played for their B team, actually played for their senior team. So this is a guy that has actually featured in La Liga on three occasions. Three substitute appearances, yes, but he's featured in La Liga. You know, that to me, that is quite a big thing. And plus, if we look at his, you know, history with uh, Granada B, it was actually had a really good year in 2019, 2020. I don't know what division he was in. He's probably the fourth tier of Spanish football because I think this one's the third tier, if I'm correct. Um, yeah, I think it's the third tier. So, you know, fourth tier of, of Spanish football. We had a really good year. You know, again, had a, not, not too bad with Kudal, but he's come to us and he's absolutely destroyed it. £49,000, I think, is a really good deal for him. We could just look at his stats. You know, in fact, we'll compare him to our next best striker, uh, or currently our next best striker. We are currently in the process of maybe signing another one. But let me find Callum Gregory. Look at that. He wipes the floor with him. Absolute beast. And the thing is with this guy, he's a target man. He's naturally a target man. But because I'm playing Gregory and Sanchez right now, Sanchez is playing an advanced forward role. The guy I'm signing, or currently in the process of signing, is a quicker player. He's someone that will play advanced player maker or poacher for me. So which means we will technically have Sanchez target man, advanced forward or poacher of the other guy. Which I will show you in a second. Actually no, I'll show you if we get him. You know what, no, I'll show you in a second because I really like the look of him as well. But yeah, this guy, thought he, you know, it's a really good um, amount of money. And if we look at his value, you know, it's 21.5k. It still is a decent amount. And I feel if he... You know, we, we signed him down to quite a long deal. It was it was three years, but I think that's, you know, fine. You know, it, it, normally I want to keep him two years as a minimum. But to me, I was able to get this guy for three years, less than £1,000 a week, 925 So at the current time, he was he is currently still our highest paid player. I don't think he will be for long, but he is currently our highest paid player. And overall, I'm, I'm just chuffed to have got him. He's absolutely beast. I can't wait to see how he does in the Champions League. Next, we did finally get Roma Perez. Now, he's not as good as a player as I previously thought, uh, but actually, according to reports, he is our third best centre-back. Now, I consider him our second best centre-back, and the reason for that is because of his potential. Potential, sorry. Matthew Smith, his potential has apparently maxed out. He'll never become better than a two-star player. Meanwhile, Perez apparently has the potential to be a four-star player. 
So this season, or since Perez has joined, he's been the starting centre back alongside um, Amari. So you know what? Not too bad as well. He's actually played really well when he's played. I um, mean, you know, I can't really complain so far. He's not really had a bad game. So overall, Perez not too bad. I like his determination. Uh, but I don't imagine he'll get a new deal after his year. His contract runs out next season. But you know, for now, you know why not? First ever Venezuelan player to ever sign for us. Actually, South American player to sign for us. And the last guy we got, which was in the 14th of November, so not too long ago really, was Ruddy Ibona. Ibonda, sorry. Ibondo? Ibondo, sorry. Ruddy Ibondo. And this guy, I think, is really good. He's a right back, so it does mean Lopez is, will be, you know, out of the team now. Lopez will be leaving at the end of his contract. This guy, though, again, look at his history. Come from Monaco, but he actually played in League 1 for Monaco on six different occasions and actually started a game for them and actually played in the Champions League or Europa League for them. I don't know which one. But yeah, to me, that is, again, that is really, really quite good for us to be able to get someone like this. I'm really surprised with the wage he took. He accepted £750 a week. I thought he'd ask for a little bit more than that. And one of the reasons for that is because he's actually a Congo international. He plays in their senior squad. He is their centre-back. To us, he's a right-back. He is their starting centre-back. So, you know, we've got someone with international experience right now. To me, a better right back than Lopez will actually compare him to Lopez. Because to me, that's the best way to, you know, see if we're improving as a team. Compare him to what we currently have in this squad. And if it wants me to actually compare it to Lopez, look at that. You know, Lopez may have maybe a little quicker, maybe a little physically better. But technically and mentally, I think Ibondo has definitely beaten Lopez. I mean, okay, I would like a little bit better determination. But, you know, things like positioning, teamwork, vision, off the ball, composure, you know, anticipation, marking, tackling, bloody hell, going forward, he's a much better player than Lopez. Just a lot better. And I, I think this is, you know, we're really pushing forward now. I'm trying to sign some absolute beast players. Uh, the guy I'm talking about, the striker I'm talking about currently, is Luis Miguel Castro. Now, he's on trial here, but look at these stats. The things that caught my eye initially when I was looking through these players was his finishing of 16, his composure of 14, his first touch of 12, and his pace and natural fitness. Those really caught me out. Now, he's, other, of course, got other really good stats, determination, decisions, flair, off the ball, teamwork, work rate, all pretty good. Long shots, not too bad. Heading, not too bad either. Okay, he could be better in other areas, for example, dribbling, concentration as well, because as a poacher, you need that, I think, to sort of watch the line. That's what I could really think of there. But to me, I really like someone who can finish and has the composure to finish as well. And I really like this guy. Plus, he comes from Barcelona. He played for Barcelona B in the Liga Adelante. And again, you, you have to be... All right, he didn't play well in any of the, really well in them seasons that he played in that division. But to be in Barcelona B, you must have possessed some quality or some potential at some point. So I'm really happy to have got this guy. He's got really good potential. He will be coming in and replacing Gregory. And the deal we've currently got going through means he would become our highest paid player and would be the first player to be paid over £1,000 a week. So it is, you know, quite a large thing. We do have 4K left in the bank, so I can afford it. I'm not breaking the team, don't worry. Um, but, yeah, it's it's quite it's quite a big moment, really. We're really, really signing some good players now. Um, so let's go into the league, anyway. Those are the transfers. I went through quite a bit in the transfers. In the league, we currently has a, have a 100% record in the, division, in the league. Uh, seven wins out of seven, beating every team so far. Only conceded four goals, half the second lowest total. Scored 27 as well, can't really stop scoring. Gregory Sanchez, you can see there, scoring a lot of goals. Average ratings were all over it. Uh, clean sheets, Santos Lewis. I don't know why, but our goalkeeper changed his name from Santos Osia to Santos Lewis. So, or Luis, I'm going to say Lewis anyway. Uh, I don't know why, just at the start of the season, I noticed that. But either way, he's still the good player. He's still saving the goals, you know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all that matters, really. Uh, but yeah. Looking really good in the league. In all competitions, we beat uh, Lincoln in the Pepe Reyes Cup to win 2-1. Our first league game of the season, we actually smashed Lincoln 7-1, with Sanchez getting four goals, including two penalties. So, yeah, that was a really, really crazy game. 4-0 followed that with a Gregory hat-trick. Sanchez scored two as we beat Britannia. Um, Angels, we smashed them 6-1, with Gregory and our, our young left midfielder, Kirby, getting two goals. Just managed to beat my, uh, Man 62 1-0. College Europa beat them 2-0. Uh, Olympique beat them two, uh, beat them 4-0, sorry. Sanchez getting 2. Uh, College Europa beat them 2-0. Britannia smashed them 4-0. Gregory getting a hat-trick. And we lost our first game of the domestic season. 1-0 to Lions in a game that we were all over them. Absolutely deserved a win, 100%. 
but we just couldn't find that opportunity to score. So as a result, we lost, you know, end of. And apparently it was a wonder strike. Um, I don't know, I didn't actually see it. I was all tabbing in a different thing. Um, well, actually, I had it on window, then I was on another thing. But apparently it was a wonder goal, so let's have a look at that anyway. <laughs> because I want to see if it really was. I imagine he whips it back to this guy. Not really a wonder goal. I was told it was a wonder strike at the end of the game. What the hell's that? <laughs> but yes, we have lost a game this season, but it was in the cup. We were already through in the cup anyway, so there's no real worry there. That's the Man 62 semi final for the same cup. But yeah, we sh hopefully we'll get our first ever undefeated season. At the same time, we'll go through the whole season with a 100% record. That would be great. You know, that would be ideal. But let's look at the team because to me, this is telling a hell of a story now. Because, well, one thing I really want to point out, first of all, is Michael O'Donoghue probably won't be signing a new deal. Not because he's a bad player, but because he um, damaged his crucial ligaments. And it was originally uh, assumed that he'd missed 10 months of the league season. He's currently missed four so far. He's expected to be out for another three to four. So he could potentially miss eight or nine months of this season. And that's the whole year. He picked it up in, a th he picked it up in training, I believe it was. How did he get injured? Um, yeah, in training, he picked it up and... So, you know, he played three league games this year, three ga four games in all competitions, I believe. Uh, let me have a look. Um, actually, no, he played three games in all competition. didn't even play a league game before that happened. So, as a result, he'll be leaving at the end of the year. Uh, I've decided as well I just offer Burgess a full-time deal for the end of the season because I felt weird having a part-time player in, the, in a squad surrounded by um, full-time players. So, I offered Burgess a deal, but he'll probably be leaving at the end of the season as well. Not because I don't like him, just because... I'd offered him £100 a week. And again, it's not because I can't afford it. It's just that I don't really see the point of having someone on backup as £100 a week. Because right now, we're, we've got dead weight. We've got dead weight of Coling, dead weight of Matthew Smith. Don't really need Jason Coling either, really, now. Just about letting his contract die out. I could never really sell him. I think that would be too harsh on the fans. Don't need Lopez. We really don't anymore. We just don't need a lot of people. But that's the thing that I wanted to show you. The, the players that were really good at the start of the year, the players that I thought were incredibly good last year, now don't even cut it as a three-star player. You know, these guys, Gregory was a four-star player pretty much all the way up to the start of this season. Then we signed Sanchez and the bar was raised and suddenly these guys were no longer good enough. Coling, we thought, I thought Dale Coling was a half-decent keeper for this level. Now, bloody Santos Luis puts him to shame and the fact is, I can... I could probably sign a better goalkeeper than Santos Luis. Look at that. I could probably sign this guy if I really wanted to. You know, apparently he's a better report than him. I don't know how true that is. But I could I could sign better players now. If we go on actually all the people I've scouted, because I scouted a lot of people. I probably wrecked my finances scouting them. But I could sign, like, a, apparently a really good left-back here of Alex Portillo. In fact, you know, someone I could have signed who's currently here on trial is Danny N Niteo, who, for those of you who don't know, in my A-bar save, he actually starts there. You know, a bit of a fall from grace, you know, playing in the Adelante for a long time and then going down to non-league. Uh, he currently won't be joining us, not because I don't want him, because I do. He's got really good stats. May not be the quickest player in the world, but he's got really good stats elsewhere. But I can't afford his wage. He wants about two grand. I can only offer 1.4 as a maximum. But it's just the squad has grown so much in such a short space of time. In about six months, the squad has completely changed. The whole, you know, the original or the former best players in this team are no longer considered that. and. You know, I really regret signing them long deals now for them players. For example, Montgomery's still got another two years after this one. I won't need him for two years. I may even consider releasing him for a bit of compensation if we do well in the Champions League and can afford it. But, yeah, I've I've, I've still got plans to improve. I'm signing a new striker. I actually made a list. Let me find that paper I wrote that on. Um, that's not it there. That's the wrong piece of paper. Sorry, i got a lot of papers in front of me. <laughs> uh, this one right here. Uh, basically... I had three people whose contracts were expiring at the end of the season. Uh, they included, or they do currently include, Amari, Lewis, and uh, Owen, actually. I need to re-sign re Owen. And Donahue. Now, Lopez will be leaving at the end of the season. I won't be signing him down. Burgess will be leaving. Um, I will be signing down Amari. I'm definitely not signing down O'Donoghue, so we will be looking for a new left-back next season. Or yeah, before the end of the season, ideally, because we don't really have a backup one. And uh, for Lewis, I probably will sign Lewis down soon. Um, I haven't actually offered him anything yet, but I'm still caught sort of leaving my options open. I don't want to dive in too early without seeing what's out there. But next season, I've already planned out what I want to be signing. I want to be signing a new centre-back, 
preferably maybe even in, in this transfer window. I want to sign a new centre-back because I don't think Perez is good enough. I want to sign a new right midfielder because Montgomery isn't good enough. And then after that, once we've got all of that covered, once we've signed that new left-back, new centre-back, new right mid, I'll probably then start looking at the centre-mid role because I don't think Baldwin's good enough anymore. In fact, I think I'm currently looking for a centre-mid right now because Terry Brown's been out injured for a little while. He tore his calf muscle, which has done a number on him. So as a result, this season I've been playing Fernandez quite a lot. And he's um, he's not done too badly. I mean, nothing particularly great. But for, for a 16-year-old who is not really good, he's not done too badly. <laughs> and he's surrounded by such quality players, it sort of probably reflects badly on him. But yeah, we, we, need, to, we need to really start signing a lot of good players i don't know why but we've managed to really been you know really get a lot of good players for example i'm really i honestly god i'm really surprised we've got people like sanchez i think that they're, they're, i don't know how and to me i can't compute how we've gone from looking at jason coling as a good player to then looking at sanchez as you know he's a good player but we'll probably we'll probably get better soon you know i can't it doesn't go through in my head we've really seen the effects now of being professional uh, financially, I'll, I guess I'll show you the finances. We are losing a lot of money. I did spend from about uh, the end of the transfer window, probably in, probably since like the start of September to maybe a few weeks ago in game time. I scouted probably well over 3,000 players in that time, maybe 4,000 players. I scouted a lot of people out and I got like 15 reports every day. In fact, if I go in my inbox, because I think I'm still scouting people because you, you know when you scout once, it doesn't really show you all their stats. I've continued to do that. Look at that. Look at these scout reports I've been getting. Reports every single day. You know, at, well, maybe not here. Again, actually, this is June. Why are we in June? I didn't even know that went that far down. But there's December. Look at that. Reports. Load of reports. 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 It's just I've got so... I just continue to and continue to scout. Because more and more people seem to be interesting in signing, interested in signing for us. Which is only going to be a more positive thing. Uh, but yeah, financially, we're still, you know, uh, despite, like what I was trying to say, despite the fact we splashed a lot of cash on scouting, I think we'll be all right to the end of the season. It's predicted we'll lose another 200k, and I could see that happening. Uh, but, you know, uh, with Champions League ho football coming in, hopefully we'll get that buy into the next round like we did last year. But either way, hopefully we can do well next year in Europe. If we can continue to sign the quality of players up to Sanchez's level, or around Sanchez's level, we can definitely put a challenge or you know apply, apply a little bit of pressure to some teams uh, not just people like tns but actual you know half decent teams maybe hjk level you know pretty decent level uh what could i go into now of course the club we did have the training facilities being improved and that has officially finished so we now have below average training facilities which is all good uh, I did ask to improve junior coaching, but they said they were unable to do that currently due to the financial situation. They said they weren't going to you know, break the bank to do that. I could maybe ask them now to see what we can do. Uh, we believe junior coaching is already good enough for the club of our size. Uh, after all I've done to raise this profile, it's the least you could do for me. I Every time I say that, every time I say that, they give it to me. You know, just a little little nudge of encouragement, a little reminder saying, hey, look, who's got you all these pro titles? And they go, oh, yeah, better, better do that. Um, so yeah, that's improved the junior coaching up to adequate now, or was it adequate a second ago? Either way, that's just improved the junior coaching. I don't, I don't know if it comes into effect straight away or not. Uh, Training-wise, we are still, you know, we, we've we lowered the, actually, that's still average now. Damn it. I don't know why these two are average, but these lot aren't. I guess it's because everyone does tactical and ball control, but only defenders do that. Attackers will do these, or midfielders, for example. Um... But yeah, you know, I'm happy with my coaching levels. I think they're all good enough to really last me forever, really. I mean, I could ask for more. I could ask for four star. But the thing is, three and a half is still pretty good. You know, you can't really knock that. It's in the Premier League. You wouldn't really mind having a three and a half. Well, f yeah, three and a half star level of coaching at some Premier League teams. So I'm happy with that for now. Actually, no way. I'm not. Spuckman needs to go. Spackman needs to go. When's his contract go out? 2025. Damn it. Probably get rid of him at the end of the season. Or if we do well in the Champions League, again, I can't really do anything right now. I don't want to spend unnecessary money because, you know, we, we may need that. We know we don't know how well we're going to do in the Champions League. We don't know. We could even go out in the first qualifying phase. You know, if you have a bad day at the office, anything can happen, really. But, yeah, I think this is going to be it for now. I think I've covered everything I really wanted to. The under-21s, I didn't do that last time, I don't think. Uh, so let's go through that now. Uh, we haven't done too well here. I don't know when you last saw it anyway, but in the under-21 qualifiers that we re-entered into, we had Israel, Slovenia, Portugal, and the former Yugoslavic Republic of Macedonia. And we managed to actually get a draw. 
I think this was our first ever. Is it our first ever point in a in a professional game, or in, in a competitive game? You know what it is. So we actually got a two-two draw against Macedonia, and the thing is, it was actually a really good game, and it could have gone either way. Look at that. Well, apart from the fact they had more shots than us, but we came back from behind. Or actually, yeah, we came back from behind twice to get a point in that game. I thought we went two 0 down, and we we didn't play too badly. You know what? Honest to God, we we might we may have even won the game on another day, which is surprisingly good. Uh, I don't know why we then lost 2-0 to Macedonia, um, to Moldova, sorry, because I'd say Macedonia are a little bit better than them. But yeah, we've not really had much much enjoyment here. We did get a draw earlier on with Andorra. Uh, next year, apparently, we, we've got two more friendly, two more internationals, but of course, we're not going to progress through. To me, it was a, a great achievement to just get a point. So, you know, I'm not going to ask for too much more yet. Uh, but the quality of players still hasn't really improved in Gibraltar. And the fact is now you can see for a, a matter of fact, we've got good foreigners come in now. This should be a, a, a nationality thing here. I don't know why, but sometimes it gets rid of it and it's quite annoying. Uh, but either way, you know, we, we, we're we adding in a lot of foreigners now. All these guys are non Gibraltarian players. You know, these guys here, include, excluding that. Actually, if we look at the whole starting eleven as a whole, Excluding Gregory, Baldwin, Montgomery. All these people are foreign. None of these guys can't play for the uh, Gibraltarian national team. And I don't really care. I honestly God couldn't really care about that right now. It's not. I'm not pleased about it. Of course, I would love to have people from Gibraltar represent us. But we're not at a good enough level. And really, you could say it's my responsibility to do that. But in another light, if I want to say improve youth recruitment... Or improve my training facilities and youth recruit on uh, junior coaching and youth facilities and things. If I want to do that, I have to bring money in. And the only way I can bring money in is by doing well in the Champions League. And if the only way I can do well in the Champions League is by bringing foreigners in and replacing the Gibraltarian players. So I, I did say, of course, before, I'm not focusing on that anymore. Or for the time being, anyway, I'm not focusing on bringing young Gibraltarian players through. And that's how it's going to be for the next few years, sadly. Next three, four, five years, I don't know. Depends. It depends, you know, because a good player could come through our youth system. You know, we could have an absolutely beast Gibraltarian player come through. And, you know, that could that could be the only Gibraltarian player we ever have for a while. Uh, Baldwin's still plugging along in there. Not got a bad average rating. I think his growth has slowed down a little bit. Uh, not as much green arrows as when you last saw him. Uh, but, yeah, he's still got potential in him. I don't know, though, if I'll give him the time to reach that. I need results sort of now. I really want to be making headway in the Champions League. And plus, we can get some half-decent centre mids out there. Where was the centre mid we were after earlier on in the season? I don't actually know. This guy. We were after this guy. But in the end, he went to uh, Makia. Well, either way, he went back to Spain. He didn't. He decided he didn't want to come to Gibraltar, which is a shame. He was on trial here and everything. And I offered him the deal while he was on trial. But he decided not to go to us and went to somewhere else. So, yeah, I think that's it for now. I don't know if there's anything else really I can go through. Um, here's a little look at actually the national team. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was meant to do before. Here's a look at the actual national team, how they did. Um, they went to the National League division. I haven't shown you this, but they went into that against some um, pretty difficult teams and ended up walking away with zero wins. Uh, in the friendlies since, uh, that they've played recently, they've got draws to Hong Kong, Luxembourg, and Singapore. Hefty defeats though to people like Bermuda, uh, Malta, Bolivia. Actually, I don't know if Bolivia are actually where they are in the rankings. Let me have a look. Actually, it's not too bad. Be a hefty defeat to people like Malta and Bermuda, teams of, or nationalities that you wouldn't really expect us to lose that heavily to. Okay, they have people like Naki Wells, Bermuda, but still, you know, come on, they're not got amazing players. I scouted one of their players like two, three years ago, and he wasn't even good enough for the squad then. Uh, they've got Liechtenstein in a friendly. They will re-enter the um, qualifying, don't they? Now, one the, well, the World Cups in 2022. So yeah, they will be entering the qualifying later this year. So, you know, they've got that to look forward to. Obviously, they're going to get a really tough qualifying thing. But, you know, what are you going to do? You can't you can't really do anything at that point. Uh, but, yeah, this is going to be for now, guys. Next time I'll meet you back will be the end of season update. Hopefully, we can continue our 100% streak going in the league. I really would love that undefeated season as a minimum. Hopefully, we can continue to sign some good players and improve the quality of the squad. And also, next time I'll meet you back, hopefully, we can get an easy team in the draw. Until then, guys. Peace out.